Before we continue with the monstrosity that uh, we're working on, let's take a look at Moby Dick or the card game. Now, it's a weird kind of game, and I guess part of why I'm doing this is to give people a view uh, of what it's like, because I bought it thinking it would be a couple of things, a nice storytelling game as well as a tribute to the book. It's very clearly a tribute to the book in terms of, you know, the detail, uh, the artwork on the on the cards, uh, the detail of the characters. In terms of a storytelling game, ah, we'll see. <laughs> My impression was a little uh, a little underwhelmed with it in the game portion of it, um, but the story you can definitely get into. Um, to begin the game, one person is going to be the first player and they get Ishmael and each character card is going to have uh, a strength value a little quote and then uh, special abilities listed below not all of them have a special ability some of them have a bad special ability like Elijah here who's cursed oh, and that just means they must always be used with their crappy value overall so the goal of the game is kind of weird which is pretty much to survive Moby Dick uh, and it fits the storyline I guess but uh, it does put you in kind of this tied in position where you have nothing really to hope for uh, except to construct yourself a crew that can survive Moby Dick. And once you start to realize that as you're playing, uh, some of some of the means of resource uh, of gaining resources, etc., start to become kind of silly. Uh, so you've got these uh, these markers are for oil, and they're I think all tens, but there may be some larger denominations in there. And you go through most of the game hunting whales, collecting oil, uh, replacing crew, getting people killed, whatever. And then at the end of it all, it's just a matter of surviving Moby Dick. And that's not really cleared out in terms of uh, in terms of the object of the game or anything right from the beginning. It sounds like, you know, hey, we're going to be on this interesting story. So if you view it uh, as a competitive game, it, it may fall a little flat. If you view it more as, hey, let's just enjoy the story as it happens, uh, it, it probably is a little bit more enjoyable. So you start off with uh, three crewmen, one person stuck with Ishmael. No, Ishmael's not bad. He's got some real advantages. And on each turn, uh, each player gets to first review their crew. And reviewing your crew involves very little. Um, you can dismiss sailors, throw them in the discard pile. This is the sailor deck. This is the sea deck, which is where your events are going to come from. When you face a whale, this deck gets used. i got to remember to shuffle that deck. Uh, I wasn't doing that as much as I should when I was playing it. Um, if you have less than two sailors at the beginning of your turn, you draw until you're up to two if you lost everyone or whatever. Um, then you're allowed to hire up to three sailors per turn, and that's going to cost depending on how you take them. If you hire them directly off the top of the deck, the first one costs you 10 barrels of oil, the second one 20, third one 30. If instead you want to choose from the discard pile, the first one you choose from the discard pile costs you 30, the second one 20, and you can combine these two. So you could draw um, one from the discard pile for 30, and then uh, hire one for 10, and then hire a second one for 20 more. And that'll cost you 60 oil to get your three characters, but you get your pick out of the discards that way. Most characters will go into the discard pile when they're done, but there are some cases where they do not. Uh, your crew can never be more than uh, seven. If you hire more than seven, you have to discard additional uh, foe. Then you're allowed to make trades with people and you can also make bribes uh, in order to try to um, uh, steal a sailor from someone. And the bribe is going to be equal to 20 times the sailor's current strength in oil. 
uh, and you can't, I don't think, offer negative oil for him. Uh, the bribing player, uh, the sailor's current employer, then has the option to spend that amount of oil to maintain and keep their sailor. And if they don't wish to do that, the bribing player gets the sailor and spends the oil back to the bank. It doesn't go to the, you're not, you're not bribing the captain. You can only do one bribe per turn. Zero strength sailors cannot be bribed. <laughs> Nothing about ones. Okay. Then once you have your crew, you're going to draw one of these C cards and see what you face. And... Oh, i got to pull one out. There's a chapter in here that we start the game with. I'm going to have to reshuffle. Trying to remember which one it is. So at the top. Okay. It's looming. It sounds proper. <laughs> yes, the loomings. Okay. And if a chapter comes up, and we start with a chapter, the special effects of that chapter will take place. So, for example, in this one, and again, a nice uh, little quote, but then uh, plus two strength on all boats, that's going to make it easier for your hunt uh, whales. And your mission is to hire a seven man crew. If you have a mission and you succeed in that, you're going to get a benefit, uh, which we'll hit in a bit. Um, as soon as a new chapter comes up, whoever drew it gets Ahab as a crew member. And then they can discard someone. If they discard Ahab, he goes out of play. He doesn't go back in the deck. That's the only way you kind of get Ahab. And Ahab's kind of cool. Uh, his ability is that he can't be bribed. His, his crew can't be bribed. Um, Ishmael's ability is to copy someone else uh, who's involved in the hunt. doesn't have to be your own sailor. It can be someone else's. Anyway, um, other things though can be events and they could also be critters that uh, you can hunt. Now critters that you can hunt have three values on them. The maximum number of sailors you can send after them. The amount of oil uh, that they will produce if you are the killer. And uh, the number of the strength that you have to exceed to finish them off. And then maybe they have a special ability, like the right whale will not be able to bite you. Okay. Um, okay. When a whale comes up, everybody gets to set up a boat with no more than the number of sailors. They may have to send certain people. So for example, Ishmael has to go with every boat. Uh, any cursed member has to go with any boat. Ahab has to go with any boat. But otherwise you try to uh, set up some sort of, uh, some sort of value. Um, for example, Bildad here, if you don't send him in a boat, his special ability isn't gonna take effect. So even though he's got a low strength, he might be of value to you to send in a boat. Um, okay, uh, when you lower your boat, you're going to be set to unfast, which just means you don't have a harpoon in the whale, and uh, then you begin uh, the attack or, or the approach or whatever, and in order to do that, You'll draw one of these cards, take the effect of it. This may be, the, many of these are an attack by the whale. So for example this, if unfast, roll greater than three to stay in the hunt. If fast, you get minus two uh, boat strength on your next attack. So no matter what, it's a, a problem. You might get knocked out of the, uh, the chase entirely, or uh, you're gonna have a reduction to the attack. The die is kind of interesting. Um, it's a one through six die. This is a one. This is a two. That's not too bad. I think a three is. Yeah, they're not easy. 
easy to... I think this is a three, but that may be a four. But there's three little pieces to it. This is the four. Maybe this is two. I, it's unreadable. I mean, it would be so much better. You, you have to memorize the different symbols. Now, that's a five, because it's got five little pips to it, five little uh, things. And then the wheel is the six. And, you know, it takes a little getting used to that, and eventually it's not too hard. Okay. Um, so what happens is you check the whale attack, see what happens. It might not be anything. And... Uh, it might end up killing some of your sailors. And then the sailors are allowed to make a counterattack. And what they do for their, their attack is you roll both dice, you add them together, and you add the strength of all your sailors in the boat. Again, special abilities might help you avoid some of the attack. Special abilities can also help you uh, attack uh, some of the critters. So for example, this guy has an extra point of strength if he's been on board the ship when Tahiti's been visited, I guess. That's not really spelled out. It may just be if you've ever visited Tahiti in, in the course of the game. Uh, it's probably easier to remember the latter, so we'll probably do that. Um, now, in order to attack, you have to exceed the strength, uh, equal or exceed the strength of the uh, um, whale or other critter and then you become fast and when you're fast you'll get a plus one to your strength but whale cards tend to be more dangerous now if you make a second successful attack once you're already fast then you kill the whale and you get the points but the first time you exceed the strength you don't kill the whale uh, dee, 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 dee. okay um, if you have double ones on your roll, you automatically succeed. If you have a character who's a harpooner, I don't think we have any of them out. There's only a couple. Um, and you roll any kind of doubles, you succeed in hitting the whale. If you end up being the guy who kills the whale, you will get the oil bonus listed on uh, the whale's card. Or you can recruit another sailor from an opponent's crew with your stories. Everyone else will get 10 barrels of oil. And then at the end of the hunt, you reshuffle the whale deck. Uh, and you pass the measure and the next person's turn happens. Now, some of the cards are Moby Dick cards. And because he's white, they're all white. <laughs> and they just have a quote on them. For the most part, those aren't going to have an effect to you until you get to a certain point in the game. Once you have a certain number of chapters in the game, and I think we're going to play with like five. I tried playing with a whole deck of chapters, and it, it was just too long that way. They suggest, I think, five. We'll, we'll play with whatever they suggest. Then you'll have a final attack on Moby Dick. And when you hunt him, uh, you'll be considered permanently fast and have the bonus. You cannot retreat or be removed from the hunt. Uh, Ahab and Fadala will enter activated. So whenever you use an ability, you get activated and you kind of push the character forward. They can only use their ability once in the course of any given hunt. For the most part. Okay, so some of the whale cards have different effects for Moby Dick. Um, in general, though, you're just trying to survive him with a crew member. Um, instead of attacking Moby Dick, the players are going to uh, make a roll. If they have more than three sailors in it, they roll two dice. If they have three or fewer, they only roll one die. And if the, sa if the roll exceeds the player's boat strength, uh, they have to kill off one of their sailors. There are no effects for double harpoon, or for double doubles, for harpooners, anything like that. And whoever survives the longest against Moby Dick wins. And that's kind of the I don't know, it feels kind of cheap that that's all the game is about, really. And that's pretty much it. Uh,
We have another suggestion playing it in chronological order. Uh, I think each time you go through a deck. Let's see. Yeah, they. They change the, the ordering a little bit. But uh, honestly, I think I'll just play the basic here. I haven't tried this Grand Providence. It looks like a longer game, and I don't think this is worth going too long. Um, I think given how long... Yeah, let's just jump in and play. We'll try to get it all in one video, I guess. It's kind of a quick hit thing.